Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on Lumber Capital Log Yard. Today, we're going to be learning how to resharpen carbide blades. And who better of a teacher than the professional blade sharpener of the family sawmill, Grandpa. We've talked a lot about carbide blades on the channel. Are they worth the money? Do they really last longer? So if you haven't seen those videos, make sure to go check those out because there's a lot of extra info on the topic. But other than that, let's get into the video. Okay, we're gonna sharpen a carbide they sent me a diamond wheel to sharpen these with. First thing I, since you don't, you don't sharpen the gullet on these, you just barely touch the face of them. So I, uh, so I set this up today, I sharpened one today because I figured it was a pretty good idea to uh, learn to swim before I jumped in the deep end. So, so this ought to go pretty good. Um, Main thing, you're just barely touching the cutting edge of this carbide. It doesn't take too much. But I, but I noticed on the first one I sharpened that they're not really all consistent. So I set it, so I was just barely, barely seeing any spark at all as it went around, but it missed a few teeth. So I didn't, I didn't mess with any adjustment. I just went twice. And, uh, but you can imagine with all these welds on these carbides here, there's bound to be a little bit of big a difference. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower the blade here. Let me back, I'm gonna get it out here where it does not touch. Now you've noticed that I've lowered this blade clear down to the level of the blocks here. Normally the blade is up about an eighth of an inch, just about, so that, it's, so that it grinds the gullet. But you don't, like I say, you don't do that with this. So I'll run a few teeth through there and see if I see any, see any if it's touching. And I'll turn the blade on. You come over here on this side, you can see. I don't want that to touch at all. Okay, it didn't touch, so I'm gonna start backing off on this and letting that <clears throat> stone come down until I get just a little bit of spark, and that's all I want, just a tiny bit. You hear it more than you see it. So it's it's grinding, but I don't want to grind any more on it. I see it missed that one. So I'm gonna turn my uh, oil on and uh, I'm gonna let this thing go around just like that. I noticed on the first one it did hit just a tiny bit hard on about two teeth. But we'll just let this thing go on around. Missed that one. Got that one. So when I so put my stop magnet on there. So when this thing goes around, I'll tighten it up a little bit and go it again. The first one, once I did that the second time, everything was consistent. You never want to start tweaking and changing in the middle of a blade because you end up with inconsistent cuts and the next time you try to sharpen it, you'll wonder what, ha what happened. So, and these don't feel the same as a, as a steel blade because they're not a point. Those other ones are a sharp point. These are a chisel. So uh, you don't get that real sharp, real sharp bite on these. You really don't see any sparks unless you're running dry with this, on this carbide. So you'd go more by sound 
you can, you can tell when you miss one. Not a problem, just go around twice. Next time you sharpen this blade, it'll probably be real consistent. They enlarged the carbides on these from the first ones we got. Couldn't sharpen the first one because the carbide was so small. But if, uh, if it goes as, I think it will, as long as the blade doesn't get damaged, I think you can get, you can get two, maybe two or three sharp, two sharpenings anyway on it. We'll find out. We'll just uh, run it at the mill and see how it does. I could be running this a lot faster, but there's really no sense in doing it. We're not, not okay. quit being barking. Another thing about these carbide blades, you don't set the, you don't have to set the teeth because the carbides themselves are, are placed on there so that you have it set. And you can, you can see it. So that's one, another advantage. You don't, don't have to mess with the setter. back off just a little bit so I get a little more cut on it. Okay, we got a Got a new little cut. We'll see how that looks when it comes out of here. Okay, we got a nice clean face on that cutting edge now. So this second time around will be will be good, and we haven't taken hardly any meat off of those at all. So we'll see how they cut up at the mill, but I think they should do fine. I'm anxious to see how many sharpenings we can get out of these. It's quite a bit of carbide on there.
The difference between these wheels, these cutting stones, you can see the width of this stone here is designed to, to uh, cut the gullet pretty thick. This one here is just real narrow, so it's just a face grind. That's all it does. There's a lot of difference between these, these two uh, stones here. So it's a CBN wheel, of course, but it's, uh, I believe it's a diamond instead of the, the, the other one. But easy enough to change, so when I when I need to do some carbides, we'll see see how many of them we use, and then we'll uh, we'll be able to decide what we want to want to do. But we still got a whole pile of those fours out there. So tomorrow I'll change it, and I'll sharpen up some fours, and you can run these run these carbides and see how you like them. That's it for today's video, everyone. I hope that you learned something. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's just a button away and it's completely free and you get a wealth of knowledge. At least I'd like to think that we bring a little bit of extra info to our sawmill companions out there. Other than that, we'll see you back here next time. Bye.